Hey guys, what's up? Lightbulb Joe here. Today we are going to discuss the Friday the 13th series. All 12 movies. 10, 11, 12 movies. There's 12 movies, right? Starts a very long time ago. Covers many decades. I haven't done a review in a while because I've been watching 12 Friday the 13th movies aside from work and yard work and yard sales and things, right? Um... Everyone knows the character of Jason Voorhees, right? He drowns when he's a kid, he has a machete and a hockey mask, and he kills people, right? Generic. But this is a very in-depth story that doesn't make sense most of the time, but when you look at it piece by piece, it does make sense because stories are woven into each other. So the first one, we have Mrs. Voorhees as the as the villain, right? She kills all these camp counselors in the 70s after her son was killed in the 50s because he drowned and no one was watching him and they were having sex and stuff like that, right? So she's, she's the one who kills people at first. Then she is beheaded with a machete. So the theory is that Jason is this zombie drowny boy who saw his mother get beheaded with a machete. And then that's why the machete became his weapon of choice, right? So the second one starts with the girl who survived the first. And then Jason is around and he takes her and there's blood everywhere in the apartment and et cetera, et cetera, right? So then the girl who survives the second starts the third movie, okay? And then the fourth was supposed to be the final one and then it wasn't. But it's interesting how the last surviving starts the movie and then dies. Then, then the last surviving starts the next movie and then dies. Jason doesn't get a... In the second movie, Jason just has a bag over his head, really. And he's using a hatchet, and he's using an axe, and he's using whatever he can find just to kill people. He doesn't get a hockey mask until the third movie. So everyone knows Jason Voorhees as his hockey masked machete-wielding individual. Does not get his hockey mask until the third movie. When he then gets a hatchet, an axe to his head, right? And uh, then uh, se sequential movies after, anytime you see Jason, most of the time, when you see Jason with the hockey mask, you see that axe in the head thing. That's from that particular movie. The fourth movie was great because um, Corey uh, Feldman, Haynes, one of the Corys, one of the 80s Corys, right, was, plays this character, Tommy Jenkins, who's a 12-year-old boy. He is at a vacation house next with his family next to a group of teenagers who are at a vacation house on Crystal Lake, which is called uh, Crystal Blood, or Camp Crystal Lake is called Camp Blood, stuff like that. So Tommy's the one who then kills Jason at the end. It's called Jason's Dead. That's it. The Final Nightmare. No, The Final Nightmare. I'm thinking Friday the Third. Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street now. Woo! Brain is just getting twisted with all these horror references. So, Tommy kills Jason. Kills, kills. Tricks Jason into thinking that he's the younger Jason, and then it kills Jason, right? That's the fourth one. Great. It's a great, like, ending to a thing. But, four, five, and six. Four, five, and six. I don't know what my fingers were just trying to do are by far the best Friday the 13th, aside from Freddy vs. Jason, which is just in a league of its own. And I'll explain why. 4, 5, and 6 keeps up with this Tommy Jenkins story arc. So in 5, we see Tommy going as a older teenager, young 20s, we don't actually get an age on him, but Tommy goes to this, like, uh, not a summer camp for people with mental disorders, I don't know how to explain it, but like people with mental issues go to this house and like contribute and like, it's not a farm, but it's still near Crystal Lake and like, it's a thing. And then Jason starts killing people again, but it turns out it's not Jason because Jason actually isn't even in the entire fifth Friday the 13th movie. It turns out that the killer is wearing a Jason disguise and it's actually the EMT Roy who's father of a kid that was killed at this mental place that Tommy was at and that's cool because you see in the fifth Friday the 13th movie you have a perfectly fine hockey mask but with blue things on it not red things on it the red oh wait I have a Jason tattoo you see the triangles right 
So there were blue triangles instead of red triangles. Okay. And then eventually, you know, they kill this guy, and then, like, the mask comes off, and they're like, wait a minute, that's not Jason. And then the sheriff's like, huh, it's Roy. He probably got some rage because his son was just murdered viciously. And that was a cool Scooby-Doo moment, which was, it's fun watching. I've seen these movies a thousand times, but watching them, you know, consecutively together, you're like, huh, that's really smart writing. How you have this Tommy Jenkins character going through all of these psychological issues, trying to figure himself out, trying to figure out his rage, trying to hone and, and just get his bearings and stuff, and then it turns out Jason's not even the guy. Jason's not even the real vic the villain here. It, it, it's this guy in a mask. Awesome. The sixth one was the final Tommy Jenkins story movie, where, because then uh, Jason's actually brought back to life, and they actually changed the actor who played... Tommy Jenkins. There were three different actors who played Tommy Jenkins in three different movies. And I don't understand why, but say la vie, whatever. So Tommy in the sixth movie actually brings Jason back to life by trying to stab his dead corpse after he, you know, tries to grave rob. Not grave rob, but dig the grave up so he can prove to himself that he's not going mad that Jason's actually in the ground. And then a lightning bolt comes and, like, brings Jason back to life. And then ever since the sixth movie, Jason has been this raging homicidal zombie maniac who just regenerates his own tissues and stuff. Four, five, and six, if you want if you want a, a good scare in the sense of good storytelling, a good great story arc is the Tommy Jenkins story arc of four, five, and six or Friday the 13th. Wow, that was a Transformers sound. That was fun. Um, seven, something happens. Wasn't that memorable? Because, again, like I said, Jason's then just a zombie at this point. Eight is when, what? They go to Manhattan because Crystal Lake is now apparently connected to a river. And then a boat that was in Crystal Lake goes down the river. And then somehow eventually winds up into the Hudson. Could Can't fathom. But the last, like, 30, 40 minutes of this movie is just... No, no, not even. The last, like, 20, 30 minutes of this movie is Jason, as a zombie, going through Manhattan, killing people. Sure. Great. The ninth, um, Jason goes to hell. We turn, it, it turns out that there's, like, magic involved now, and, like, his soul, his zombie soul can go from people to people, and there's, like, a lot of puppetry involved in this, in this, in this eighth movie. That, that was pretty interesting. The, uh, the, the ninth movie, I'm sorry. The Jason Goes to Hell. The puppetry and the mechanics of it. Um, it turns out Jason has a sister. Because that's relevant. And a thing. And only another Voorhees can kill another Voorhees. Sure. Sure. So his sister winds up killing him and he gets dragged to hell. Yeah. Then, uh... Jason X, Jason 10, is him in outer space which is 400 years in the future, Earth 1, which is this Earth, is just completely annihilated, and Earth 2 is a thing, and, like, these students are on a field trip to Earth 1 to see what they can salvage, and they happen to get to Crystal Lake Research Lab or whatever, where Jason's cryo-frozen with this woman he tried to kill, the scientist he tried to kill, and, like, he gets back to a spaceship, and then he gets these upgrades from these nano-ants, which, like, regenerate his body tissue from 400 years ago, and, like, he's just, like, this bionic killing machine, and it's, like, okay, it's a thing. Plot-wise, though, Freddy vs. Jason is before, obviously, the 400 years in the future, which is a great movie, which came out in 2003. Jason 10, Jason X came out in 2002. Freddy vs. Jason was 03. And it's 98 minutes long. It is absolutely hilarious and perfect in a not unconventional sense. Even though uh, Kane Hodder, Hoder, who's played Jason Voorhees for the entire Jason Voorhees stuff wasn't Jason Voorhees in this movie because the director of Freddy vs. Jason wanted a height difference between Freddy Krueger, Robert England is 5'7", 5'8", something like that. So they wanted the Freddy character to be much smaller because, you know, that's how Freddy's been perceived through the Nightmare on Elm Street movies, which we'll talk about at some point. Um, and then Jason is much taller and, like, you know, there's that fire vs. water height difference thing. Okay, so that plot is... <laughs> Freddy realizes he doesn't have enough power over the children's dreams of Elm Street, so he 
brings Jason back from hell to help him bring terror to the children. It's a good plot, right? The original, original ending of Freddy vs. Jason, and I've seen this movie a billion times, I've seen it with commentary a billion times, I've seen it behind the scenes a billion times. The original ending that they wanted to do was have Freddy and Jason both get pulled down to hell and uh, have Pinhead greet them and say, welcome, pain or pleasure, kind of a thing. And, uh, you know, like, welcome to my nightmare, pain or pleasure, kind of a thing. I thought that was really cool, but the Hellraiser franchise is owned by a different company, so they couldn't integrate the characters. But who knows? We'll see what happens. Then there's a 2009 remake of Friday the 13th. But it has Jason in a hockey mask. So technically, it's a remake of the third Friday the 13th. You know, Jared Pet Petaliki? Petaliki? I can't say his name. He, the guy from Supernatural who dies all the time. Um, he was in it. There's a lot of good actors in the 2009 remake. It just, it was, a, it was a weird story. Like, why is Jason seeing his mother in this particular girl and kidnapping her? And keeping her underground. Like, what? Jason Voorhees would never do that. That's not Jason's character. And then it's a matter of what Jason are we talking about? Are we talking about the conscious Jason who's killing for revenge of his dead mother and the fact that he drowned? He was left to drown? Or is it this zombie Jason? I don't know. So, for those of you new to the Friday the 13th series, I'm a big fan, obviously. It's my tattoo. Um, four, five, and six are my favorites. Five is the, hands down the best Friday the 13th. Aside from Freddy vs. Jason. Freddy vs. Jason is just the cinematic gold which everyone bashes all the time, but it's so great for that crossover event. Because we actually do get a crossover event in uh, nine when Jason goes to hell. The very, very end before the credit scene, <laughs> Freddy's hand pops up with the claw, grabs the mask, drags it down, and we hear the Nightmare on Elm Street theme song. Because they've been talking about doing a crossover for years. Years. And then they finally did it. And I was pleasantly happy. And I think, I think that concludes our Friday the 13th 12 movie series discussion. All right? Thoughts, comments, what was your favorite Friday the 13th? Have you ever watched a Friday the 13th? Did you know, up until this very moment, that Jason got his hockey mask in the third Friday the 13th movie? That the mother was the villain of the first one? That he wore a bag over his head in the second one? If you didn't know that, then you only know what, what pop culture has showed us, right? It's interesting, though, that the third movie in a film series is when the character actually got his physical attributes. Hockey mask and a machete. That's about it. I think that's all I got. Mucho mahalo, guys.